Bueller. <laughs> hey! Oh, ow! Ooh, that hurt. Okay, everybody, get rid of the stick. You know what time it is? It must be noon. Big D, it's noon? Uh, yes. You're In not most... kidding me, are you? No, I we're good. My clock. Okay, everybody. It's Friday, I hope. Mini, is it Friday? Yes. Woo! I got to calm down. All right. No, <laughs> not ever going to happen. No, okay, no. everybody, happy Festool Friday, and welcome to Festool Live. Let's call out the room. First and foremost, that's Sparky. Ha ha, got you going the wrong way. <laughs> All right, Sparky, check out that Halloween bandana. Minnie, you know how to dress that guy. <laughs> Over here, we have the number one person here at Festool. Yeah, we're six feet apart. This is my buddy. This is Min Min. She's on the board today. Behind the camera, I think his name is Chris, the unit, Cybert. And over here, one of my really good friends is Big D. Hey, everybody. Derek Clements, man. All right. He used to be part of the E Street Band. <laughs> no, that was Clarence Clements, wasn't it? Yeah. Boy, that guy was awesome. Okay, everybody. But Big D is also a phenomenal musician. Wow. Well, welcome. And I just want to call out uh, some people here at Festool. And I just did. <laughs> also, <laughs> also online, we have Brent Shively. He's answering all your questions. He's a vital part of this team. Thank you, Mr. Shively. All right, so what's the topic today? This is, this is kind of really fun for me because um, I'll just tell you what it is. It's Capex versus the MFT3. And I used to hear about this when the Capex was coming out. Why do I need a Capex? Oh, boy. Uh, why do I need an MFT? It's because we in 2007, this came to North America, and we were hearing all the questions. Well, I'm getting into the Festool system. What should I buy first? Woo, that's a heck of a question. Uh, early years, we just had the MFT here in the States, so that was an easy question. The capabilities of each I will cover today. I'm not going to go on and on on each individually it because I've done we've done videos on this. We've done lives on the MFT. I think we've done two on the MFT yep. and a, two or three surrounding the KPEX. So I don't want to be redundant. There's going to be a chance I'm going to be a little redundant. I apologize right away. But we also got a uh, – and the reason I wanted to do this is I think it was a week or two ago. Uh, somebody asked me the question again, and I went, that's still kicking around, that question. So I said, hey, there's some people out there that are probably still looking to get into the Festool system, and I'm going to help you make a decision. Hopefully, <laughs> and I say that because, yes, I have a lot of information in my head about Festool, and I can go on and on. I have on this tool, because I consider the MFT3 a tool, and I can go on and on on this. But let me boil it down to you. What's your maximum width of cut you're going to be cutting? And someone will go, huh? So one of, and I'm just going to undo the crown stop here, okay? And it's also about what trade are you in, if you're in a trade, okay? Um, I'm just going to get my crown stop off here really quick. I was just cutting some stuff this morning. Your capacity with the Capex at 90, cross-cut capacity is it's it's simple it's 12 uh <laughs> we're in the states yes okay 12 inches <laughs> for everybody else around the world it's 305 millimeter that's at 90 by the way that's just about every single saw i've used slide compound in my life it's 12 inches okay or 305 millimeter now i can give you another specification at 45 it's basically eight and a quarter in other words, when I'm not getting that 12 inches here, when I turn it to 45, I'm actually getting what? Eight and a half or eight and a quarter. All right. Now, some might correct me, but I can look over here and it's actually 210 millimeter. Okay. Yes, I have a boatload of statistics up here because I want to hopefully guide you into your first, how do you say, delve into the festival system. So someone will say, hey, what's the crosscut capacity? And I'm going to show you something really cool about the MFT3, okay? Because uh, when I first started messing around with the MFT3, I think it was in 2005, um, I was like, I was reading the catalog, 
back then it was really small and I remember it said you get a, a 27 inch here in the States or 700 millimeter crosscut capacity on this so I was coming over here and I was going hmm and hopefully that's the big difference between it's it's your width of cut there's some other nuances I'll show you but look I'm not getting I'm getting 600 millimeters okay now someone uh, someone out there's probably correct me and go well said you could connect them I show you showed us how to connect them so you, yes, you can connect multifunction tables, and the only thing you have to do is get a longer rail, <laughs> right? Or what did I do that last MFT3 episode? I turned it around, and I used the rail that when you buy it as a package or the, the plus, you get a 1,400 rail, and you can use it in this configuration. So the width is a lot larger. You are, how do you say, uh, narrowed into a 12-inch crosscut capacity at 90. So that might be the deciding factor. Okay, and there's some other ones, and I'll show you in a minute. So when I'm just looking at this, and I'm going to maximize this. I'm going to release the rail clamp here, okay? And I'm going to move this. See this knob right here? I'm going to move it back all the way, but I still need to use this. So I can move it back here like this, right? And I can put my rail clamp in here and put it in the extrusion. I'm just going to move it up just a hair. Whoa. Man, let's just get it up there. There we go. Just like this. I'll move it back. And I'll have to put this into the very back. Just like this. Mm. Let me get it there. I'm struggling a little this morning. Sorry, everybody. There we go. See? But I still need the rail clamp in there because that helps me eliminate the deflection of the fence or part of the rail. And when I bring it back here, I'm still not getting... See, look, I'm still not getting 700 millimeters, and I'm measuring to this part of the front uh, rail, rail uh, pin. So someone says, well, I'm not getting that, what? 700 millimeter. Aha! And this is what I'm going to show you. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to loosen it here. And that's why we have part of that extrusion there, because I can stand this up here, bring this in, and I get a little more movement back, and that's where you can achieve. And I'm still locking in and locking down. And Chris, get in here so we can see this. I'm getting a little over 700 millimeters when that's in the tall position, that tall fence. So remember that when you're doing that. Also... Um, I believe that the multifunction table is a little more versatile. Okay, so I had this piece, and yesterday I was in here cutting some uh, quarter-inch material. I'm doing a layup at home, and I was looking at this, and yeah, this is 12 inches. That's my cross cut. But what if I need to and take this like this? And I've seen people do dangerous acts with a slide compound miner saw. They've taken stuff like this and held it and cut this. That is so dangerous. You see these lines right here? See them? See these two lines? And it says, in between those two lines, don't put your hands. <laughs> okay? And it's really tough to clamp a piece like this. Where now, if you have the multifunction table, or you could just lay the rail down. You have a track saw. And I, bel and no, I, don't, I don't believe. I know that with the multifunction table plus the track saw, whichever one you choose, okay, whether it's a 55-75, or, you know, even the cordless version of the 55, I can lay that on the line and make the cut. Okay, so your versatility escalates. But make sure you set the depth. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, so you can clean up wood like that. You can, you have that versatility multifunction table. Now, who uses that Capex? If it's not in a shop, say it's out on a job site. Who's taking a Capex to a job site? Big D? Uh, the trim guy. The trim carpenter. This is what they need. Okay? That's w that is their number one tool out on a job site. Okay? So, of course, if a guy who's a trim carpenter comes up to me and says, oh, I'm a trim carpenter, I go, hey, Capex. I think they already know but they always want to know why the multifunction table because I have the dual scale here. I could swing one way and swing the other. Okay, and then I had a situation 
way back when, and I, I was going through this in my head the last week, why an MFT three versus a Capex, and I knew somebody way back when in Fort Lauderdale, he was working out in Las Vegas, and he was cutting crown molding. Okay, he found a way to do it differently. Festool in 92 wasn't in the States. But boy, if I had a multifunction table back then, I would have recommended him to use this. He had a 15-inch saw, and he still couldn't cut it. And it w <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> he still couldn't cut it. He was cutting tall crown molding, and it was this tall. Why that tall? Because it was in one of the casinos. It was foam. And that's how he was cutting it. And he figured out a way with a bandsaw to do it. And I went, okay, that's cool. So what I'm getting at is, let me set up this crown. Okay, I got my nest here. I've done this. I forget what episode it was. You can always reference it. I'm going to bring it in. I'm going to set it up like this. I know this crown. What? This is how it's on the wall. So I'm going to put it upside down. And I'm going to cut a, I'm going to set up what we call a nest. I'm just going to take it like this. I'm going to lock it down. Whoopsie, jumping all over the place too much today. I'm going to bring it in. I got it lined up, and I'm going to lock it down. Okay, now if we look over at the MFT3, Chris, I'm going to be there in a minute. Okay. okay. If we look over here, that crown's not going to happen. I can't cut it nested. So that's another reason. Are you cutting a lot or are you cutting base molding? Do you want to cut it in the position? Do you want to cut crown in the position? We call it nesting. You only have to remember only if it's an outside corner. You only have to remember one. It's a, at a 90, not a radius. You have to remember one thing. What is it, everybody? It's 45 degrees. See how easy that is? Okay. Now, there's. what if I don't want to cut it nested? <laughs> okay, I don't have a tall fence here. I don't have a way of setting up crown stops or what we call a nest. You could cut it on the flat. Okay, well, that's okay. And you can cut wider or taller crowns on this. But that's why I came up and I said earlier what the, 40, what the, the, uh, the width of cut on the capex is at 45. It's like eight and a quarter. Okay, or 210 millimeter. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm going to be cutting at two degrees, or I'm going to lay out a couple of degrees for you. I can cut this crown molding. Someone says you can't cut crown molding on the MFT3. Heck, you can. Because you have here, in the degree I was setting on, does anybody know when you're cutting crown flat? If it's a perfect 90, it's 31.6. That's your mita. Your bevel on a perfect 90 outside corner is what? It's 33.9, but everybody cheats it at 34. So I could set 34 degrees right on my track saw and set 31 point what? Point 0.6 right on here. Hey, we can check it out because on here, that's why on the Capex, we have, look, a 31 6. It's not a positive detent, but there's your 31.6 right there. So you can cut crown on the flat. It doesn't have to be nested. So if you need got a wider crown, other than what? 6 and 5 eighths nested in the special cutting position, you get something a little bit bigger. You can cut it flat on the capex, but you can cut really wide crown and small crown right on your um, MFT3. So hopefully that helped. Now, whew, there's another big decider out there, okay? So I've covered width of cut. I've cut, oh, here's one for you. Here's one for you. Depth of cut. Okay, so what saw do you have for your MFT3? What is it? It's you got a, uh, you got a 55, if it's a 55 or TSC 55, you're going to get a 50 millimeter at 90 drop or cut, right? Okay, so with that, you're going to get, I believe it's 50 millimeters, but it's, I think in the States, it's an inch and 15 sixteenths. It's the same thing. It's just metric versus imperial. Woo! I'm not getting into that debate today. All right, so your depth of cut on the Capex is 88 millimeters. All right, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to come in here. Um, I'm going to lift up the guide, and that is because like any, any saw, from here to here is your depth of cut, right? 
Okay, good. Now I'm going to contradict myself in just a few minutes because I said 88 millimeters, right? Okay. Everybody wants to know why it says 120 here. That's your depth of cut. I'm going to stop right there and I'll go back to the Capex. Okay. Now, on your MFT3, depending on what saw you have, okay, you have either a 50 millimeter at 90 or at 45, you'll have an, uh, I think it's an inch and 7 sixteenths, which is 37 millimeters. Okay, this is all online and in the catalog or right over here on my board. Okay, good. Oh, if you have a 75, you have a uh, 2 and an eighth or 55 millimeter. But here's what's cool about the 75. You have a, no, it's, I'm sorry, time out. At 90, you have a 70 millimeter cut and at uh, yes, at 90 is 7, mil which is 2 and 3 quarter. Woo! Sorry. So, on the Capex, your depth is 3 and 15, 30 seconds, or 88 millimeter. So, you have a bigger depth of cut here. Follow? Wider, deeper. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Phew! Okay, so... The 75, and this is important because a lot of people are waterfalling with our 75 doing waterfall cuts. Chris, how are those shoulders? Good? Okay, good. Okay, I'm, I'm doing okay? All right, 15 minutes, huh? I'm already past the five-minute mark? Okay, good. <laughs> I just like to make these guys laugh. Okay, so uh, with the 75 on 45, think about this. You got a slab. You're trying to waterfall a lot, a big piece. You get a two and an eighth at 45 on the 75. So I thought I'd throw that so you understand why a 75 versus a 55. Good. Okay. Now, here's another big difference. And this is where the Capex gets its name or number, 120. And uh, I don't know if I've ever covered the nesting feature on the Capex. Uh, I'm not nesting, the um, special cutting position. You've hinted at it. I've hinted at it. Okay. It, yeah. So hopefully, Chris, you can come in here and get this. So, yeah, oh, no, I think I have. Okay. So here's my depth of cut. Look. And I'm going to draw this right here. Okay. And I want you to see this. See how that flips up? But look at all this behind the blade. A lot of people think you can utilize that, but you can't because this gets in the way. And also over here... Your motor gets in the way, right here. So this is why we have that 120, and someone will ask me, hey, what's the depth of cut? Almost all 10-inch or a little over 10-inch saws cut 3 and 7, 3 and, I always say 7 sixteenths. It's 15, 30 seconds or 88 millimeter. But if I go like this, come in here, Chris, so you can see this, and I flip this forward, it actually locks the head. Follow? And check this out. Look how much. See, there's my normal depth. I can cut deeper. So I can cut one inch, 25 millimeter, to four and three quarter tall, and that helps you cut that baseboard. So that's what a lot, a lot of 12-inch saws get. And we kind of wanted to say, and that's why we always, it was in the marketing or in the, uh, our catalogs, always said <coughs> a 10-inch saw with 12-inch capacity. And that's one of the things we have to get out. And that's why I remember to talk about that today. Because tall crown in a nested position, in that position, you can do six and five eighths tall crown, which is unheard of. So it gives you a lot of 12 inch capacities in a 10 inch saw. Now, in saying that, there's a big difference. What is it that you're taking this to your job site a lot of the times, right? Okay. That's a lot, as I say, schlepping back and forth in and out of the truck or van, then on the job site, and you want to make it compact. You want to make it light in weight. So, bear with me. You also don't want to take up the entire space inside that van. This is the space that the Capex takes up if you have it on the stand, okay, with what? The extensions. Okay? Over here... This, Chris, follow me. Don't get hurt on this fence. Watch out for the stick I dropped over here. Good. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> Told ya. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Minnie, how we doing? 
You still writing? Oh, I love you, baby. Okay. Here's your what? MFT3. Here's your rail. Here's your fence. Check this out. There's your TS55. I always suggest all the hardware. Get yourself a 137 sustainer. All the hardware fits in there except for the rail and fence. Doesn't come with it, but it's ready to go. And that's all the space that the MFT3 takes up. Wow. Okay, so here we go. And I'm going to give you some, not estimates, but so you'll remember. So the MFT3, and that's the thing is, is you're moving things in and off of the job site if you're, if you're portable. Okay, 61 pounds for the, t uh, for the um, <sighs> MFT3. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, God. And the TS55 is roughly 10 pounds. Hmm. Okay, many a little bit of math. 61 plus 10. Uh, 71. So there you go. Now, here's the kicker. So I know it's roughly 22. I'm going by pounds, not kilograms. 22 pounds for the stand. Okay, and 47 pounds. Okay, sometimes in the catalog it says 50, but 47 pounds for the capex. So the stand and the capex without the extensions. Mini, 47 plus 22. 69, I'll say it, but this is episode 71. All right, good. <laughs> so, oh, sometimes I give people too much information, and I don't want to, but there's some deciding factors in here, and I'm going to boil it all down to width of cut. The MFT3 also provides something else out on the job site. Does anybody else know? Big D, I'll question you. Do you know why the MFT is great to have on a job site? Yes. What? It's very versatile. Ah, how so? It's adaptable. He, he did not know I was going to quiz him. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the ultimate portable workbench because you can clamp everything. You have a great workstation. It's Look, look, it doesn't take up a lot of room. You can clamp horizontally. You can clamp vertically. Okay. We have we have all these great clamping clamping uh, ways. We have clamping elements. And I mean, we did a vest tool live on what? Just clamping, didn't we, guys? Oh yeah. Clamping essentials. It's out there for you. And don't forget, because <laughs> I did. <laughs> Don't forget, we're on YouTube now, but this is going to go out on Instagram. It's also going to go out on Facebook this afternoon. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscription bell. That was for you, Chris. You're our YouTube guru. Okay. And um, I think that's it. Min, you got anything else? Oh, man, I love it. So that's all you have? One line? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, uh, before I get going... And doing the rap when I call out everybody's name. We were uh, live last week from uh, St. Louis. I want to thank that whole crew over there. They were fantastic. We had a great time. We learned a lot to the point where, yes, we're going to be coming to your neck of the woods next year. We're really stoked about it. Uh, you know what was the best part about this whole thing? L being out there with you was you guys coming there and telling us how much you missed Minnie. <laughs> <laughs> the one th and by the way, I am working to bring Minnie with us on the road because I don't want to hear where's Minnie. Okay, so I'm trying to get Minnie to come out with us. We, we got another one coming up. When is it? I think in November. It's coming up. It's at a big show in Ohio, so we'll be there for that. We're going to do a live on Friday at noon. Okay. Oh, my word. And you know what? We've been doing this in this room. This is our 71st episode. And we've been doing this with the four of us in here, Brent Online. And uh, we've had other people in here. Uh, but i got to tell you, I love you guys here in this room. Brent, you as well. Um, I can't thank you enough uh, because this has got me through this time here that we're going through worldwide. So I want to thank you. And you guys coming to the show and telling us how we've... Uh, how do you say, uh, lightened your Friday at noons? We really appreciate it. Okay, enough of that sentimental stuff. Hey, 
I'm going to say hi to our biggest fans out there. I know they're in Plainfield, Indiana. I know you're watching, Sailor. I know you're watching, Judah. And I want to say thank you for being there for us. Okay. This is cute. Minneapolis. That's how she remembers how to spin it. How to Minnesota. How to say it. I love it. Ian, you're there from East Yorkshire. Woo! Yo, Larvy, Finland. Joe from Watsika, Illinois. Dave from Flossmoor, Illinois. Man, Illinois. Downers Grove, Illinois. <coughs> Surring, Wisconsin. Johnny O from Echo, New Jersey. Tom and Kelly, you're always there from Eatonton, Georgia. The Netherlands. Rob, you're there from, <laughs> from Cinnaminson, New Jersey. All right. Estonia. Michael from Edmonton, Alberta. Elk Woodworking from Dougsville, Georgia. Douglasville, Georgia. Carmichael, California. St. Louis, Missouri. We love you. Woo! Go Cads. Eden, New York. Bozeman, Montana. Jefferson City, Missouri. Denmark. Wake Forest, North Carolina. David from Ocala, Florida. I know who you are. <laughs> um, Majid from Toronto. Berlin, Germany. Luber from Sarasota, Florida. France. Whitestone, New York. Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Darmstadt. Germany, Portsmouth, Rhode Island, Lecce, 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 Mini, Italy. Lecce, How do you Lecce? say that? L E C C E. Let's go with Lecce. Okay, you know what? I'll look it up too. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll 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 make sure it's there next week. You be here next week. Lecce, uh, in Italy, Island of Bermuda, Ottawa, Canada. Kurt from Rochester, Michigan. Columbus, Ohio, <coughs> Toledo, Ohio, DIY Woodworking from Kingsman, Arizona, you're always there. Jeff from Whitefish, Montana. She's still writing on the other yes, side, and is. I'm like halfway through. Ben, this is, you guys are awesome. We love you. Tulsa, Oklahoma, Paris, Tennessee, Peorior, no, Peoria, <laughs> Illinois, Austin, Texas. Hey, Austin, we're coming to see you. Korea, Franklin, Tennessee, Pumpenbull, Australia. We love you. Homestat, Sweden, Orlando, Florida, Cali, Colombia. Really? South America. That's awesome. Flagstaff, Arizona, Cyprus, Texas, Sopron, Hungary. God, I love this. Bloomington, Indiana. Go, I, you. Greeley, Colorado, Serbia, Europe. Monterey Bay, California. Warren from Batavia, Ohio. He's visiting Purdue. Woo! Go Boilermakers. Hey, I said go IU and Boilermakers in the same day. All right, good. Czech Republic. Fenton, Michigan. I know who that is. Weybridge, England. Minnie, turn that around, babe. Woo! Sparky, how am I doing? Sparky. Wow, we keep going, and I'm loving this. Wow, Finland, UK, Chata Oak Adult Education Cabinet Class. Woo! All right, say that. I, I can't. Para, oh, you're always there. Para Maribo Suriname. Russ from Chick <laughs> Chickester, UK. Dawn, I know who you are, from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Chef Shannon from Brooklyn. How the hell are you? Springfield, Ohio. Gales Creek, Oregon, Southern California, Nolens, that's New Orleans, Nolens, Helena, Arkansas, Portugal, woo, London, UK, Mose, Mosque, Carpentry, Mose, oh, M-O-S-C, Carpentry, Jordan from Whitestown, that's my buddy, Jordan drove from Whitestown all the way to St. Louis to hang out with us last week. You're the bomb, brother. Walnut Grove Farm in Shawsville, Virginia. <laughs> this is so cool. S R or P. Okay, Sridnes, Wurlitska, oh, Russia. Today's winner. That's a good one. I'll have the pronunciation. Leo from Belgium, how you doing? Pearland, Texas. Austin, again, that's a two-pack from Ta Austin. Kayalami, South Africa, you're always with us. Thank you. Jordan, I mean Gordon from Edinburgh, you're always there. Whew, good scotch. Merritt Island, Florida, Los Angeles, California. 
times two, that's a two-pack. Charleston, South Carolina. Upper Chichester, Pennsylvania. Boston! Go Sox, baby! Atlanta. Aston, PA. That's Pennsylvania. Chicago. Woo! Hey, South Charleston. Brent's desk. <laughs> wow, party going on. Halifax, Nova Scotia. I think that's a world record, men, men. Simone, how are ya? We good, men? Okay, everybody. We'll be back here Friday at noon next week, episode 72. We'll see you then. I can't say it enough. We love you. Thanks for making it for us. And this is a wrap. Say bye, Spocky. Woo, woo. All right, everybody. That's a wrap. We'll see you next week for Festool Live. <laughs>